Hello everyone and welcome to the live stream Q&A for memory cards. The whole idea of what we're doing here is I get asked all the time from people still what kind of memory card do I need and stuff like just random issues they might have with their memory cards. So I'm here to just kind of explain different types of memory cards, how to figure out what memory card you need for your camera so you get the best performance out of it. There's lots of numbers involved and it seems like it might be confusing, but once you go through all the different ones, it, it really makes a lot of sense. So hello to everyone who's here already. Go ahead and say hi in the chat as well. And I like doing these live videos. I'm gonna to try to do a lot more than this month as opposed to my regular uh, just YouTube videos because I like interacting with you guys in real time and being able to answer your questions right now and uh, that type of stuff. So I'm gonna start going through this month some of my old topics and just going over them so people can better understand if they do have questions, I can answer them. And if there's common questions, I will go over those as well. If you hear My Little Pony in the background, that's uh, my girls downstairs watching it. And uh, if you hear uh, a baby crying, you know, just roll with it. That's what happens with five kids and uh, one of them being a newborn. So, I'm just checking my sound levels. I got me playing right here. So, first off, Delkin, two terabytes. So, a good question. I'm gonna get to uh, people's questions about various cameras or specific memory cards a little later on in the Q&A part, but I'm gonna go over some basic stuff first, just so that everyone's on the same page. So, get rid of my big face, get up in the corner. And we have, get rid of that. Or first off, let's bring that up one more time. So as you can see from this picture, I put in a lot of different memory cards. So you've got micro SD cards here. You have, uh, this is Compact Flash, QXD, CF Express Type B, CF Express Type A, and then adapters for micro SD cards, CFast cards, and regular old SD cards is what we're gonna use first. And for everyone who's watching as well, all the memory cards I talk about are gonna have, I'm gonna have linked in the description and uh, you can check that out for good memory cards and all those are affiliate links for Amazon. So you guys do help me out greatly when you buy those through the channel. And uh, even if there's a different memory card you wanna get, if you click one of those links first, it will still help out with all that. So feel free to help out the channel that way because it's great being able to pay bills and stuff from YouTube. So. Let's get on with some basic stuff first. So, and I took some screenshots from one of my old uh, videos. This was my very first, or first video that started getting a lot of views. It is my memory card video explaining all the numbers, so I took some screenshots. It's funny going back and watching it because I'm super monotone and very boring, but it's still my best performing video. So, if you make the right topic and the algorithm picks up, you never know what'll happen, I think like 30 or 40% of my subscribers came from this video. But anyways, we have SDHC versus XDXC. And basically, SDHC and XC are just two different filing systems. And HC max out at 32 gigabytes, whereas XC have up to one to two terabyte now. So it's more so just a different filing system capacity wise. There's some things to keep in mind with SDHC cards on some cameras because of the way the filing system is, it will split up your recordings into multiple pieces. It'll still record a whole video, but once it gets to a certain file size, it starts a new file, and so you gotta put all those together in editing. Uh, <clears throat> I will get to, I'll look that up in a little bit when you're asking about the uh, card for the R5 and different stuff, I'll get to those in a bit. So the only difference between SDHC and XC is capacity. Next up, obviously capacity numbers. We talked about those, so you can get a lot higher with XDXC. You wanna be careful with how much you get because you. I always wanna get used to, as soon as I record something, I'm done with the whole whatever shoot that I'm doing, put all that on the computer and then make sure it's backed up because it is really easy to just leave stuff on there forever and then you forget to transfer stuff. You format the card and lose all that. I did that once. I was recording stuff for my sister for her YouTube channel that she was starting and I was about to record my own video and I'm just so used to going through and formatting my cards, I completely erased everything we did for a couple hours for her channel, so. That was a bad feeling. Oh, and everyone who's here, 
If you want to, go ahead and hit that like button, and uh, that helps out as well, so more people see it. So, just remember, don't get lazy with backing up your stuff just because you get a higher capacity card. I usually go with 128 or 256. 128 is usually enough for me. Um, so, this number here, 95 megabytes per second. A lot of people look at those when they're trying to decide what kind of card they need for video. And keep in mind, what I'm talking about here is specifically for video. Pictures are a different thing, and that's where that number comes into play. It's more so for when you're doing burst shots, you know, taking a lot of pictures, holding down the shutter. If you have a camera that can do that fast, that helps out with writing and buffering. Those are peak speeds or max speeds, okay? So that's its maximum speed it can achieve for a short amount of time, like if you're taking some burst shots, some sporting event, whatever. Whereas the ones we care about are all on the right, the U3, the C10, the V30, we'll get to those in a little bit, but those are sustained speeds. For video, you're recording at a sustained rate, so you want a sustained speed high enough in order to make sure that you uh, don't get any issues with your recording, drop frames, or just stop recording at all. So when it comes to megabits, megabytes, you see it's listed up there as 95 megabytes per second. I guess I should point this way, even though on my screen it's over here, so it looks like I'm pointing at it. Anyways, so eight bits equals one byte. So eight megabits equals one megabyte. The reason that's important is because, as you see, megabit is little b, megabyte is big B. And that's important because, like my camera, that I'm usually shooting on my um, FX3 or like a7 III, a lot of the Sony cameras will shoot at 100 megabits per second at 4K, the lower quality one, lower quality, that's the lower quality one on my FX3, whereas if I shoot the highest one, it's like 600 something megabits per second. But that 100 megabits equals 12.5 megabytes per second. So when you see speeds like 95 megabytes, or if more so if someone sees that their camera has 100 megabits per second, they just automatically assume it's megabytes and think that a card like this isn't fast enough because it says 95 megabytes in the top corner, whereas that doesn't matter. What matters are the numbers on the right for video. So, uh, capacities, yep, so there's the speeds. Oh, that's a nice face. <clears throat> um, V30, so V speeds are something they came up with a few years ago, and that's basically denotes video speeds. And it's the same thing as the U, where you see the U3, that means that it's a UHS-1 bus, not that that matters, but this little I here means one. On other cards, there's a two, meaning it's a UHS-2 bus. We'll get to that in a minute. But the U3 means that it will, it's guaranteed to write at a minimum of 30 megabytes per second. So like that other camera I had, or this one I was talking about, if I was shooting at 100 megabits per second, which equals 12 and a half megabytes per second, that means this card is fast enough for that video writing. And the C10, that's an older class rating. It means no lower than 10 megabytes per second, but the U3 trumps that in this case. I don't know why they put both on here. That's just confusing me. But the V is a newer one. It's V30, means 30 megabytes per second. The same thing. I don't know why they put all the different ones on there still, just to confuse people. But that's how you tell. Those are the sustained speeds that are listed there. So some other cards will have V60, V90. And that's where you get into the stuff you need for cameras like the R5, this A7S III or FX3 like I'm using now, and we will get to those in a bit. <clears throat> so classes, they're used, if you get some lower end cards, there's like class two, class four, six, 10, and those all mean no lower than two megabytes, four megabytes, six megabytes per second, all that. Uh, so U1 and U3. U1 cards, no lower than 10 megabytes. U3, no lower than 30 megabytes. And yeah, U1 and Class 10 are the same. So this is where I was saying the UHS buses, UHS-1 versus UHS-2. And those basically, just, a UHS-2 can write even faster because it has an extra row of pins, as you can see right here. But if your camera doesn't support UHS-2, like my uh, A7 III had a UHS-1 port and a UHS-2 port, so if I put a UHS-2 card into the UHS-1 port, it'll still record, but it'll only be recording based on these top pins and will max out the speeds that this card would be able to do. So there's no point in getting this faster card if your camera is not compatible. <clears throat> so if you look in your manual and you see your camera is 
only UHS-1 compatible, there's no point wasting extra money getting a UHS-2 card. That said, if you plan on upgrading in the future to a camera that will have this, then it wouldn't hurt to get that because you'll still have, um, you know, it'll still be the speed you need for that camera. But when you move up, you won't have to buy new memory cards. Then the V30-1690, like on my FX3 here, I have a V90 card in it because it can shoot upwards of, I forget what it is, uh, a lot, a lot of, we'll look at that up in a little bit when we go over these, but a lot higher than the 12 and a half. So I need over V60, which is over 60 megabytes per second, the V90. So it's below um, 90 megabytes per second, but higher than 60. So I need the V90 card to shoot in the highest mode on that camera. And that's where we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to look that up on your camera and make sure you have the right card in a little bit. So those are all the main things to know on a memory card. Oh, and something I didn't mention that some people point out is this little lock here. If you slide that down, then that's gonna make it so you can't write anything on it. So you gotta unlock it to make sure that you can. I guess that's just a, I don't know, say you filmed a wedding or something and you didn't wanna accidentally delete it, you could lock that to make sure that you didn't accidentally delete your footage hitting the wrong button. So <clears throat> let's move on to And my computer is locking up. Awesome. Uh, this one. Yep, here we go. I don't know why I have YouTube on there. Let's go to Google. So how to tell which one you need. The first thing you want to do is look at the camera's manual. So I'm going to, like this is a Canon T2i. This was my very first, well my wife's camera I got for her that I started using for video. And the newer versions are like the T7, the T8i. So you can easily go to Google. Let's look up Canon T8i manual. Because I have people ask me all the time and I just, I've started responding with like, well, what does the manual say? Because a lot of people don't even know that the manual has that information. So let's look up this, come on. And Okay, of course. All right. <clears throat> yeah, I'll accept. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. PDF manual. Boom. Here we go. So, when we look at this, let's make that a little bigger here. You can scroll through here. Thankfully, these are all uh, PDFs you can click on now where they used to, you'd have to scroll through everything. Here, inserting or removing cards. Usually that section is where it tells you about that. If not, then a lot of times it is later on in the movie recording mode. So we're gonna check movie recordings 331. We're gonna check the other one first and see what it says. Uh, here, inserting or removing cards. So this looks like it's literally just telling us how to do it. Formatting the card. Uh, okay. So that part was not helpful. So let's go back to the top. And we will scroll to that video section first. Or next, not first. Playback. Movie recording, here we go. So. It's gonna be in here somewhere, we just gotta find it. it. Tells you all the different video modes. White balance, yep, yep, yep. Movie recording. And you can imagine when I get hundreds of these same questions people ask me with different cameras, like how long it takes me to look up if I do this, what kind of card they need for their camera. That's why I wanna make it clear, hey, this is what you need in order to get the right card for your camera, as far as video goes. ISO. Almost there, folks. I don't care about filters. Here we go. Speed and playback, no. 
Here, movie recording size, this is what we want. So this tells 4K, 16 by 9, yep, that's cool. There's some important notes in here that uh, common issues people have, like with your camera stopping recording and stuff like that. Frame rate, yep, yep, compression. Made a video on that if you want to know what IPB is versus, well, I guess they only have IPB on this, but if you have the R5 or something like that, different compression modes will give you different quality. <clears throat> All right, cards that can record movies. Your card performance requirements. So format the card first, that's an important thing. A lot of people don't realize, hey, you need to format the card in the camera so that it will write properly. So another, this is what I was talking about before. If you record a lot of cameras, record a movie exceeding four gigabytes, it'll keep recording if you have an SD, here it says right here, SDHC card. Um, it automatically creates a new file, but if you're using an SDXC card, the whole movie will be saved to a single file instead of multiple files. So that's another limitation of the HC cards that I mentioned earlier. Uh, time limit, yeah, 30 minute limit right there. That's, I have another video on that. Maximum recording time, 29 minutes and 59 seconds because of old tax laws, which is totally stupid. Okay, I'm gonna go back up to their link. Cards that can record movies. Card performance requirements, here we go. So we have 4K, IPB, you need a UHS-1 speed class three or higher. So if the card has that U3 that we talked about earlier, then that means it's fast enough to shoot 4K, 24 frames per second. Then full HD, you see here SD speed class 10 or higher. And then depending on the frame rate you use, there's a six or higher, four or higher. But if you want a 4K time lapse, read speed of 40 megabytes per second or higher. So that is gonna require a higher level card than the U3 because U3 is 30 megabytes per second. Although that's read speed, not write speed. So that's a little bit different. You should be fine with this UHS class three or higher. That will cover all these other modes here, all of your video recording modes. So you go into manual, you find that, boom, there you go. You know that a U3 card will work just fine. Something to be aware of though, is that certain cameras, I don't know why, are just incompatible with certain cards. Like the Canon R6, I made a video on that and I ended up taking it down because it was before I used the camera, I just went based on what Canon has in their information here and I suggested a Lexar card for it that shot at V60, I think, because Alexa was one of the cheapest options and I use it for all my Sony cameras with no problem, but apparently people have issues and it just stops recording. Even though the card is fast enough, I have no idea why. It just doesn't work well with Canon. So that's the long route to figure it out. So an easier way is to do something like BH Photo Video because they almost always have listed what people need on their cards. So, for example, let's look up the Canon T8i. Pull this camera up here. So if you click on specs, this is usually the way I look up people's, uh, what they need. You go down through here until you get to video, right here, recording modes. 4K, 24 frames per second, 120 megabits per second. So. You have to do a little math with this. So just like we said, I'll pull out a calculator so you guys can see. Um, if I can find a calculator, I haven't used it on my computer in so long. There we go. So, okay, I guess I can't make that any bigger. So it's eight megabits per megabyte, right? So 120 divided by eight, so that's 15 megabytes per second. So remember it said a U3 rated card is what you needed. And this just shows that highest recording rate is 15 megabytes per second. So that U3 card means 30 megabytes per second. So you can record that. So if you got a card that was only U1 class 10, that will not be fast enough. So what I have listed in the description there, the U3 SD card, 128 gigabyte, that is uh, what you need for that. 
The other thing to remember when it comes, it's more so for older cameras, like this T2i, I think it can't, it's not compatible with a card over 128 gigabytes. So if you have an older card, you may not wanna be getting super high capacity cards, but you don't really need them with an older camera because the file sizes aren't that big because it's not recording really high quality stuff since it is older, but that's something to be aware of. And your manual will let you know if there is a, a capacity cap on your card. So now if you compare that, you see that's 120 megabits per second, which is actually a really uh, good rate. It's compared to something like the Canon R5. I'm using Canon examples when I don't even like Canon cameras anymore. But, you know, I'll look at some Sony stuff too. So, we've got Canon, it's, they have a lot of different modes. So like this, raw 12-bit, 2600 megabits per second. So let's pull up that again. 2600 divided by eight, that's 325 megabytes per second. So there are no SD cards that are compatible with that. And that is why Canon, and the R5 has a CF Express Type B port in it. Move this up out of the way. <clears throat> as you can see down here as well, it tells you what kind of memory cards the cameras take. Oops. Interface. So CF Express Type B and also SD card UHS2. So you get a V90 card on a Canon. I have a whole video on Canon cards as well. But certain modes. I'm not going to do all the math now, but you can do with a V90 card. But if you want the absolute highest 422 10-bit crazy 8K video, you're going to need at least a V90 card, or you're going to have to go up to the uh, CF Express card, which get extra expensive. And once again, all those are listed in the description as well. I'll show you an example real quick. Of got my camera in the way here, so I gotta look over my shoulder here. But check this out. How expensive, 256 gigabyte CF Express Type B. Of course it's not showing up, but look down here. We've got $800 for a one terabyte. That is expensive. And there's other brands that are cheaper, but like this one's 250 bucks. So you're paying a lot of money for this memory card. So if you really, really want that 8K, um, what's it called, raw video, then cool. but. If you don't, you know, you can go with one of the lower quality ones, use a V90 card. They're still expensive, way more expensive than the regular U3 SD cards, but you know, you do what you got to do. So another option is as far as finding, once again, to Google, I can put in Canon T8i recording bit rate. And a lot of times it'll have a list, especially for new ones. Um, but it might not, who knows. So this one, oh, here we go, bitrate max, 120 megabits per second for the T8i, then there's the T7i, 60 megabits per second. So you see they doubled the max bitrate because it's 4K video, they're giving a lot higher quality. So that's a quick way to do it too, take that with a grain of salt because it depends on where this is being pulled from. Like here it's pulled from this article, not necessarily from Canon themselves, but that's another way that you can find that out for yourself. Um, this stuff I know isn't super exciting, but it is important to know. So we talked about the compatibility, all that good stuff, the symbols. Um, yeah, so if there, I'm going to just ramble on about a few other things, but if there are any questions you have in particular about your camera or a certain type of memory card, all that type of stuff, like, let me pull up this picture again. When we're looking at these cards, obviously you're gonna know based on what camera you have, what kind of memory card you need, but stuff like micro SD cards are typically for drones or uh, GoPros, small things like that. You can use, they're cheaper as well, you can use a micro SD card with an adapter and a camera. However, this adapter, I don't know if it's rated at the same speed as the card. So if you had, say, a V60, V90 micro SD card and you're putting it in an adapter to put in your camera, that adapter might not be rated at V90. It could just be 
you know, an adapter to put in your computer to transfer stuff and it's going to be a slower speed. So that's something to be aware of. You can always try it, but I just use SD cards in my camera if it's built for an SD card. Stuff like SD cards, most cameras, like my FX3 takes them, most entry level DSLRs and mirrorless cameras are all SD cards. You get to a compact flash, which is right here. Not as many cameras use that anymore. Stuff like the Canon, uh, which one? Haven't had in so long. 5D Mark III, I had one of those. It had a SD slot and a compact flash and the 5D Mark IV has it as well. Then you have the XQD card. This is the predecessor to the uh, CF Express. Oh, I got my QXD here. That's the predecessor to the CF Express Type B. They're literally the same size card, but your camera, the, these were mostly the QXD made for Nikon, like the uh, Z6, Z7, a lot of their DSLRs. And even though these are the same, I think Nikon cameras had a firmware update where you can use CF Express Type B, but only the Sony version. I'm not familiar with a lot of Nikon stuff, but that's what I read. Um, I don't, I've never really liked Nikon for filming, but you can make any camera just about look good. If you know lighting, all that type of stuff. So we have uh, QXD. There's not a lot of cameras that use that. Then there's CF Express, which is what can Canon's cameras, like the Canon R5, the Sony A7S Mark III, well not that one. This one is just for Canon R5 and other cameras that have really high recording rates. The Type A is what Sony came out with for the FX3, the A7S Mark III, to shoot in their highest modes the SD cards V90 aren't good enough for. So these are almost the size of an SD card. They're a lot smaller than the CF Express cards, which makes them better for cameras like this. But you can see here, it has a little clapper, it says 400, so that's good up to 400 megabytes per second. And like with that camera, or that Canon that we saw that was shooting at 325 megabytes per second, that's where these cards come into play. And then you get into CFast cards, stuff like the 1DX Mark III, on Canon, and I think their new R3 or whatever it is have CFast cards, or they might have the CF Express B. I'd have to look it up. But um, some cinema cameras use CFast cards, super expensive. Once again, I have all these linked in the description. But uh, yeah, there's expensive. The You gotta keep that in mind when you're like, oh, I wanna save up to get a Canon R5 or whatever. Then you get the camera not realizing, oh man, the memory card I need for it's $500. And you think, well, I'll just get a cheap memory card. Well, now you might as well have just gotten like a Canon, uh, what are they, RP or EOS R, because you're shooting at the same quality video with the same type of full frame sensor that you would have had on the other camera because your card you have isn't fast enough for the higher quality that you wanted. So make sure before you get an expensive camera that you look into all the support gear that is required as well like maybe an ice pack for the r5 with the overheating but um i think that's most of the stuff on the memory card so if you have a certain one let's look over here um delkin two terabyte today it is in promo and 500 dollars b h delkin two terabyte with card reader for can r5 well i can't tell you if uh You'd have to leave a link or else tell me a specific card because here, I'll pull it up just so you know what I'm talking about. You can't necessarily just say, hey, is a two terabyte card good enough? Yeah, the capacity is good enough. However, that doesn't mean that the speed is fast enough. So let's look, Delkin two terabyte. And once again, I have a video on the Canon R5 that I go through all the bit rates, show what cards will allow you to do what, uh, what's it called? My mind just went blank. Which video modes, recording modes. So let's see, I'm guessing this is the deal. Ends in 530. A thousand dollars, see how expensive that is? It's crazy. So looking at this, And you don't want this fool you like max write speed, read speed is like, oh, 1500 megabytes per second. Um, 
Canon D90. Okay, I'll look at that in a second, John. When you look at this, that's the max write speed. So remember, once again, that is a momentary burst speed. It's not sustained speed. So you think, oh, my max speed is at 325 megabytes per second. But uh, yeah, that's not actually sustained. So let's see if they have a sustain. A lot of times they don't put the sustained on there. So I can't tell you for sure. They don't have any markings listed on this card as well showing. Sometimes if you look in the overview, it'll tell read speeds of up to this mount, making it suitable for blah, blah, blah. Plus continuous, okay, advanced speeds. That doesn't help. That doesn't help. So I can't really answer that. I don't, Delkin doesn't have listed there. So just to show CF Express Type B. I'll show you the difference with this one here. They always want to list the max, 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 but it don't show. I think Sony lists it. Maybe they don't. That's not helpful. But that's the hard thing with these. I'm assuming it would be good enough. As long as you can return it, then yeah, that would be uh, fine to do. I mean, I can't see the fine print anywhere. And like the CF Express Type A cards show you that little symbol, like the 400 with the clapper. I'll pull that up on here. See ya. Man, you also need a lot of computer power to process that stuff as well as um, lots of, like I've got two 14 terabyte uh, external hard drives down there that I dump all my stuff onto because all these videos make a lot. But you see this little clapper with a 400, that means you're good. 400 megabytes per second, whereas these are your burst speeds. 700 write megabytes per second, 800 read for the R and the W, but that is your sustain speed right there. And they don't list it on here, but that's what those symbols mean. So, yeah, <clears throat> I'm not sure. Let's go. Um, what SD cards for Canon D90? I'm not even familiar with that. Let's look. Canon D90. Or Nikon D90? Because I was thinking that sounded like a D90. Uh, it was a Nikon thing. or 90D, is that what you meant for Canon? We'll look at both. Let's start with the 90D. So specs, um, Canon, okay, so 90D. Okay, so you see they don't have it listed here. This is usually the first place I go. So next up, I'm gonna try typing in on Google that Canon 90D uh, bit rate. Here it says approximately 120 megabits per second for 4K video, but we are going to make sure, so I'm going to put 90D manual. Pull something up here real quick on my other screen. Oops. Sorry, my camera's literally right in front of my monitor that's recording for uh, for this. Uh, okay, so here we go. So 90D, this manual is for the EOS 90D. The thing I don't like about Canon is they make, they're fine cameras, like you can make anything look good, but the thing I don't like about them is that they're always skimping on the video modes. They leave in that 30 minute recording limit, which is super annoying, they leave in so I can talk and scroll at the same time. They leave in, um, like they crop in on all the 4K instead of using the whole sensor, which then on a lot of cameras, they don't, um, they don't allow you to, I lose my train of thought. Oh, it messes up the autofocus, which really stinks because you go to 4K, but then all of a sudden the autofocus doesn't work very well. Here, when recording movies, a high capacity card with ample performance, for details, see page 618. Bloop. 
here we go. So, uh, yep, yep, that's not helpful. Size, all it says is use a fast enough card. Thanks, here we go. So, this shows how much time you can actually, I got it. Uh, we have, if you get a 128 gigabyte card, that will allow you to record for two hours and 21 minutes. Now keep in mind, that's not straight recording. It's gonna stop at that 29 minutes and 59 seconds, and then you have to restart your recording, but the card can hold two hours and 21 minutes of footage at this rate. So, 128 gigabyte card, they have up here, here. So what we saw in the other one, so for 4K, and full HD up to 120 frames per second, you need a UHS-3 or higher card. So with that said, let me make sure that I have the right thing on here. One of, come on. One of these cards right here would be plenty and that would give you based on, find that manual, based on this, two hours and 21 minutes of recording time at 4K. So that right there, John, that I just put in the chat, is a card that would be good, and those are pretty inexpensive too. Those are, which will give you good quality, because that is a whole 30 bucks, and that's all you need to get the best quality out of your camera for up to two hours and 20 minutes of recording time. So, there you go. If anyone else here wants to know a certain card that they need for their camera, feel free to let me know, or I'm gonna wrap it up here pretty soon, because. Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep rambling on about random SD card stuff. But uh, I do have, if you search the channel, like a lot of people don't realize that you can, when you're on someone's channel, you can actually search their channel like this. So let's say memory card. Because a lot of people will say, hey, you should make a video on ND filters. And I'm like, hey, I already have. Yeah, Lexar, that works fine too. As long as it's a U3 on the card, then you're good to go. Um, but like this, type in memory card, so that's the one that I took the screenshots from. I have one for drones, uh, for this camera, Nikon cameras, and these are you know almost two years old, some of these videos, so they're not gonna have the newer ones. R5, micro, all kinds of stuff on SD cards, so there's lots of stuff there. Uh, but let's see. Wayne, uh, something like the G9 or GH5. So just the same thing I was doing before, I'm going to, let's get rid of all that stuff. Pull it up on here, B&H first, because their stuff is usually good info. Oh, that's cool, blogger kit, nice. So Panasonic, see this is the kind of stuff I like when you guys are here and I can answer your questions. Hey Jake, and help you guys out because that's fun to do rather than just making a video and seeing what people comment and respond. I like this real time, it's a lot more fun. So if you guys like this stuff, hit the like button and I'll make keep making more videos like it because these are a lot easier to do. Even though I ramble a lot, the interaction's fun. So Lumix G G9 and I think, just to throw this out there, I'm not saying I'm not gonna answer, but right here, I think, I'm gonna pull this up real quick. Mm-hmm, blah, blah, blah. I think I have the G9 in here. Yeah, G9 right there. So this is the card I recommend for the G9, this 128 gigabyte. I'll just put that over here right now. For the G9. And then also the GH5. That's the cool thing about these. Um, oh, and this is one of the ones after the fact that some people let me know. You see I put um, new Sony card recommendation in the link because some people are having, even though the card should be fast enough, people are having some issues with the original card I suggested. So I went in here and updated that because I don't want you want to get a card that's not going to be compatible with their camera. But just to show you, I, I want to go through and show you, you know, how you come about that. So the G9. Uh... Yeah, I feel the same, John. It's fun talking to everyone. So G9, we have Micro Four Thirds, specs, uh, here, 150 megabits per
per second is the maximum bit rate for that camera. So when we pull this up, once again, you do 150 divided by eight to convert those megabits to meg, oops, not 87, to megabytes. That's 18.75 megabytes per second. So you just need a U3 card or higher in order to take full advantage of that camera's capabilities. Whereas the GH5, I've been wanting to get my hands on the GH5. I still haven't used one. My very first camera, well, this T2i was my wife's first camera, but the first one I got specifically for me was a DJI Osmo because I thought if it was on a gimbal, it was perfect and that's all I needed because all my footage would be smooth and awesome. Then I realized it's not a whole lot better than your camera aside from having a bigger sensor. But I did buy an upgraded camera for it and then uh, some lenses, Micro Four Thirds stuff. It was nice because they were cheap. But then I realized it had this little whine in the gimbal that was super annoying because you couldn't use any of the audio from it. I started out making music videos, so it didn't really matter. But the audio, when I started making short films, I was like, well, this gimbal's useless. And I sold that, ended up getting, I started using my wife's 5D Mark III, and I was like, holy cow, this is so much better quality from that full frame. And then ended up going to Sony cameras and all that good stuff. This lens is ridiculous. 85 millimeter that my wife likes. It's super heavy. But back to the GH5. Just rambling about cameras, folks. Uh, we have, oh, and let me know as well what time or what days y'all would prefer live streams like this because I'm at home. When I'm not at work, I'm at home all day. Like I do schedules where I'm gone and home. So uh, it, time of day doesn't matter for me, but I know a lot of people working may not be able to do this till nighttime or maybe weekends are better. So y'all let me know what is best for you. Ooh, GH5. So 400 megabytes per second is the max bit rate there. So we do that 400, uh, where's my divided? Divided by eight, 50 megabytes per second. So a U3 card is not good enough, which means that you are going, if you click on that link, I'm gonna pull that up, bring it over here. This card is what I linked down there, but you see it has a V60 right there. It's an SD card. That means it can shoot a sustained speed of 120, sorry, I just, I saw the, I don't know where 120 came from. V60, a minimum sustained speed of 60 megabytes per second. So because, where's that calculator? Because 50 is what it takes in order to shoot at this 400 megabytes per second, then you need a V60 card that is guaranteed to shoot a minimum of 60 megabytes per second. And those are more expensive, but that comes with better quality. There's storage and all that stuff that's expensive. So there you go. That's for the GH5 and the G9. And uh, let's look at something crazy. Let's look at a red camera, see what theirs are and see how expensive these are. I think they have their own, like you're just buying the camera, then you gotta buy lenses, monitors, all kinds of stuff. 25, let's look at the most expensive one. $60,000 for a camera. I don't even wanna buy a car that costs that much. But that's why a lot of places like don't buy these, they rent them. Even movie companies, they rent cameras for their shoots and then you're done. So you always use the most up-to-date stuff. Because you buy a $60,000 camera, then the movie's done, you sell it. I mean, you might as well just rent the stuff. Let's see. I don't think they have it listed. Like ProRes 422, 120 frames per second. Yeah. I don't think they have it listed on here. I'm kind of interested now. I want to see. What is this called? Red Ranger Monstro. Recording bitrate. I don't even know if they're gonna say it has compatible cards there. I'm pretty sure you have to buy cards from them for red cameras. Here we go. <clears throat> Following table shows all compatible memory cards. 512 gigabytes, a terabyte. Data rates, 8K video. 59 minutes when you're shooting that. 
doesn't say using which. Dang, look at that, a whole 16 minutes you get. Dang, that is crazy. So let's look up how much one of these are. Mini mag, one terabyte. All right, I'm just filling the time while waiting to see if anyone else has any questions about a memory card. Memory, oops, memory card. Oh, shoot. There we go, folks. So you get the $60,000 camera. Then you have a $2,350 memory card that is 960 gigabytes. That's more expensive than most cameras people get. So you got $100,000 camera rigs that they use in movies. It is crazy. It'd be fun to use one, but it's not practical for most stuff like this up to 300 megabytes per second write speed which is kind of interesting since you consider that that cf express type a card that we saw for the fx3 said 400 megabytes per second so that would be fast enough the same as this thing but you can only use this certain type of card in their camera so you know they make more money off of all that stuff which you can't blame them i mean that is a very niche business to have and you do what you want but if that's it i think i'm gonna wrap it up here guys thanks for watching like subscribe all that good stuff and uh i'm gonna be doing another video next week probably i'm gonna be out of town um oh yeah what's the best brand for gopro hero 9 black sure uh while i'm looking up the stuff i'll just keep saying what i was saying i'm gonna be out of town next week but I'm going to test the speed of the internet in some of the hotels I'm in. If it's fast enough, I may do another live video there. And my plan is I'm thinking I might do another uh, SEO optimizing video showing how to, my process for going through everything and help you guys out with that before I go on to you know another topic for one of my old videos. Uh, let's see. GoPro... Hero 9 Black. Oh, wait, that's Amazon. I don't want Amazon. I want here. GoPro Hero 9 Black. See if they have it on here. And I'm pretty sure I made, I'm not sure if the 9 was out yet, though. I have a video on that in here somewhere. GoPros. Let's see if it's in here. I'm killing my retention and watch time on these videos by just clicking off. But it has 17,000 views. Yeah, so the Hero 8 was the newest one when I made this. I'm guessing this card is probably good enough. i check which kind it was. 128 gigabyte U3, so it's V30. So let's see what this one's bit rate is. I keep looking over here because my computer that I'm my monitor here is monitoring my live stream, but my computer over here is doubled over here, but I'm just going back and forth and it's messing with my head. Okay, so they don't have it listed there. So next step, let's do um, Hero, GoPro, Hero, Nine Black, Bitrate. Oh, there's a Hero 10 now. Here, 100 megabits per second. Maximum bitrate available on the Hero 9 is 100 megabits per second. That's only available with 4K and 2.7K resolutions. Um, other combinations drop down below that, ranging from 100 megabits at the top end to 45 megabits per second at the low end. So a lot of people, there's a, uh, what's it called? I, I think this is where I got all the information for the GoPros because I couldn't find the bitrate stuff and they do in-depth tests on them. So I'll put this in here. GoPro Hero 9 Black, boom. But yeah, 100 megabits per second, that divided by eight is 12.5 megabytes per second. And so therefore this, click on the wrong screen again, this U3 card right there, you see the U3 is, and the V30 means that it is capable of sustaining a minimum bit rate of 30 megabytes per second, which covers that 12 and a half megabytes per second that the GoPro writes at, because it's a higher rate than that. And there's also a new, I wrote this down somewhere. 
They've been putting this for a couple years now, this A2. There's an A1 and A2 rating, and that's just more speed class ratings. I think that's more to do with cell phones. Like A1 is good enough for most cell phones. For I use an iPhone, so it doesn't take memory cards, but the uh, Samsung ones that take memory cards, it's supposed to be fast enough to record their stuff, and then A2 is even faster for other applications. I don't, the only thing I have that uses micro SD cards is my Mavic drone, so I don't really pay that much attention to it. But that's it. But if no one else has any questions about memory cards, oh, as far as brands go, unless your camera is not compatible with one, go with the cheapest brand you can get. Like the caveat to that is, put this up here. I guess I'll put my face big up here. Yeah, iPhone. The caveat to that is if it's from a seller that isn't legit. Hey, so yeah, I covered that a little while ago. The micro SD card with an adapter. Let me pull it up again real quick. You can use that. You know, like the uh, GH5 we were talking about earlier. Get rid of this. Um, the GH5 we're talking about, so it takes, it was the V60 card we needed to get the highest rate. And you could get a V60 micro SD card, but I'm not sure that the adapter is actually rated for that higher speed. So you could try it, and people do that because the micro SD cards are cheaper. But I don't know if the micro, the adapter, it's just an extension of the card, but if the adapter's rated at a lower speed just to transfer stuff to your computer, then that could hurt you when you put it into the camera thinking, all right, I got my V60 micro SD card, but maybe the adapter is only rated at V30. Well, now you're gonna have issues when you try to record that highest quality. So I always just go with a normal SD card if that's what the camera takes. If it takes a micro SD card, then I'll go with that. So. You can, but just be aware that it might not work if the can't if the adapter isn't actually rated. And I have not found a way to find out what the adapter is rated at. Um, yeah, but I think that's good. Thanks again for watching, folks. I will. If you haven't joined my uh, Facebook group, I have linked in the description. Camera Motion Community. Where I don't post a lot there, but when people ask questions, I try to answer as quick as I can, and that's just a way to help people out. It's not a group for you to go in and just share your videos and stuff like that. I don't like doing that because it really doesn't help anyone's channel. I would have been in some groups when I first started that did that and it really just hurt videos because most people just click on it, not actually watch your video and it kills your watch time. You want views from people who actually care. So it's just a group to learn about filmmaking, stuff like this. You have questions about your camera, you have issues, you want to learn techniques and all that stuff. And I post when I'm going to do live streams to help you guys out with this type of thing. So. Be sure to check that out. I'll post ahead of time on my channel and in the group when I'm gonna do live streams. Hope this was helpful, it was fun for me. I like talking to you guys in real time. Thanks uh, John, thanks Wayne and uh, Jake for all y'all's interaction. It makes these a lot of fun and it's just real fun to connect and help you guys. So I will see you soon and uh, have a good night.